Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings, all that you do for us. We thank you for this opportunity once again to study your word. And Lord, we invite you by your Holy Spirit to, to capture our attention, to reveal yourself and your truth to us, to change us, to challenge us, to give us victory in our lives. We thank you for the privilege that it is to continue studying your word again and again. Thank you for an opportunity to gather together with those of like precious faith and like mind. We ask that your will would be done in our midst. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Well, we're studying Cain. And we come now to our second study of six studies in his life. And I want to read a passage of Scripture. We read it last week. As a matter of fact, I'll read those 16 verses again. And then we'll come back to one particular verse. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, it says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man of the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of the flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why, art, why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, Am I? I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now the verse for our focus in this study is found in verse 7. I want to read it again. If thou doest well, thou shalt, shalt not, if thou doest well, I'm sorry, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. The title of our study is this, Someone is at the door. Someone is at the door. The last passage of scripture that we mentioned in our last study concerning Cain being the world's first hothead was found in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 and 27. It says, And be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. That literally means in the Greek, don't give him a foothold and a, a way in. And in this passage of Scripture, the Lord is warning Cain, and he says, if you don't do well, sin lieth at the door. Someone's at the door. In this study, I want us to look at three things. First, the door. Second, the desire. And third, the dominion. 
the door, the desire, and the dominion. The Lord says, if you do well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Now I believe this is a metaphor. The Lord is using this as an example for Cain to understand what's really taking place. Jesus uses this same type of picturing in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 where he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. And so we have this idea of the door and the Lord's trying to get Cain to, to understand a spiritual truth. The doorway, the gate, the opening of our lives, sin is at that door. It's waiting just outside. It's, it's lying in wait. It's crouching down. Just waiting for its victim. Just outside. Sin is at the door. No wonder we find so many scriptures pertaining to this idea where Jesus says to his disciples the night that he was in Gethsemane, he said, watch and pray lest ye enter into temptation. Watch and pray. Look around. Be alert. We're told in the Scripture several times to beware. Beware. Peter tells us, be sober. Be vigilant. Because you have an adversary, the devil. He's roaming about seeking whom he may devour. And sin is right outside the door. There are threats outside, things that seek to do us harm. Now there was a time, a day, and an age where people didn't lock their doors. Maybe there's still some places around the world that, that remains true, but in most places, doors have to be locked for safety's sake to keep a, a would-be intruder or one that would do harm at bay outside. It's a, a barrier. It's, it's there to keep the threat outside and remain safe on the inside. And the Lord is, is saying to Cain, he's trying to get his attention, and I believe he would try to get our attention today as well. Be careful. Be vigilant, be sober, be alert, beware, watch and pray. Because sin lieth at the door. It means it's, it's laying wait, it's laying there, it's crouching down, it's, it's hiding, waiting for us at a time unaware to strike, to make its move in our life. We must be on guard. There's a doorway of our life. The Lord is saying that, that we have a big part to play in what we allow into our lives. So outside of our lives, if you will, outside the door, there is sin we find here in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and there is a Savior we find at the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. And the Lord is saying, I'm standing there knocking. Open the door. Let me in. Fill your life with myself. Be careful. There's something else outside the door. It desires, which is our second point. The first one is the door. The Lord gives us this word picture, this metaphor for us to, to, to get a better understanding that, that sin is, is there. It's, it's, it's outside the door. And it, it has a desire. And its desire is for you. It's interesting that 
after the Lord dealt with Adam and Eve for their sin, he said to, to Eve that your desire shall be to your husband and, and he shall rule over you. Well, here now, the Lord is speaking to Cain and he uses the same type of words. He said, sin lieth at the door and it desires to have you. It desires you. I'm reminded of a passage of Scripture in Luke chapter 2. You can, you can turn there with me. Where the Lord says something similar to another man. And his name is Peter. Luke chapter 22. We'll start reading in verse 31. We'll look at verse 31 and 32. Jesus says to Peter, He says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, beware, Take note, Satan hath desired to have you. Not only does the Lord desire our heart and desire our, our lives, we have an enemy who desires us as well. Sin lieth at the, the door. and He desires to have you. Satan hath desired to have you, Jesus says, that he may sift you as wheat. He wants to take you down, take you out. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You're not in this alone, Peter. Your brothers are as well. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life, and that you might have life more abundantly. There's a thief. He, he desires to have you. You are being hunted. You are being watched. Sin is crouching right outside the door, waiting for its moment. It desires to have you. I want to read a passage of Scripture in the New Testament as well. In, in Romans chapter 7, Paul makes an interesting statement. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I want to read verses 14 through 21. Paul's talking about sin and the struggle with sin. And he says in verse 41, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 14, 14 through 21 of Romans chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that lieth, that dwelleth with me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And this is the, the, the key verse. He says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Sin is crouching at the door. It's always on the job. Always wanting to strike. Always wanting to seize an opportunity in our lives. We'll read another passage of Scripture in the New Testament. It's found in James chapter 1. James also is talking about sin. And he says this, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, desire, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. death. This man is drawn away of his own lust, his desire. Sin lieth at the door, and, and he desires you. And he will use your very desires against you. He says, Cain, if thou doest well, thou shalt, shalt not thou be accepted, but if thou doest 
not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. His desire. He's at the door and he desires you. And if we're not careful, if we're not watchful, if we're not prayerful, sin will seize upon our desire. That's why it's so important for the Lord to remain our desire. Invite Jesus into your life. Sup with Him and He with you. Continually fellowship with Him and abide in Him. And you won't have to worry about sin outside the door hijacking your desires. We've got to be careful because the Bible tells us that, that our enemy is like a roaring lion. Now there's danger in that. But at least in that scenario we can hear Him in the distance we know that the threat is near. Oftentimes, he's, he's more subtle like a serpent. and Even more deceptive to strike. But it even gets worse than that. Oftentimes, he comes as an angel of light. We must be careful because sin lieth at the, the door and his desire is to have you. So we've looked at the door, we've looked at the desire, but now we need to look at the dominion because the Lord says to Cain... And thou shalt rule over him. That word rule there means to have dominion. I want to read a passage of Scripture. I want to read two passages of Scripture. The first one's in the Old Testament. You can turn with me to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Another word picture describing our lives. It says this, He that hath no rule... Or dominion. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Without that rule, without that dominion. And God gave man dominion. And, and Jesus has given his disciples authority. He told his, his disciples that they were given authority over the enemy to tread upon serpents and scorpions and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. The Lord wants us to be in dominion over sin, not the other way around. In Romans chapter 6, Paul says this, and he uses this idea of, of dominion. The Lord is telling Cain, he's telling us that, that we need to, to rule over it. Romans chapter 6 verses 11 through 18 we'll read. He says, Likewise reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Reign, rule. That ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Desire. There it is again. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. In verse 14, Paul says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Cain, you need to rule over it. It's outside the door. It desires you. But the dominion should be yours, not sin's. We need to have on the armor of God continually. We need to be aware at all times. Guard your heart, for out of it flow all the issues of life. And we need to actively be in the fight. Actively in the fight. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let me remind you, as we look at Cain, someone is at the door. And you and I have a choice who and what we allow in our lives. And I would encourage you today to invite the Lord into your life, not only as your Savior, but as Lord. And not only as Savior and Lord, but to fill your life so there's no room for anything on the outside to make its way on the inside. 
that you can live in victory over sin and have dominion over sin as the Lord intended in the lives of His people. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You that in Christ we can have victory over sin. We ask that You'd fill us with Your Holy Spirit. Empower us to be aware, to be alert, to, to discern, we ask, Lord, that you'd help us to live and walk in victory over our enemy and over sin. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.